hello guys uh, welcome to my youtube channel english for professionals today i thought uh, i'll give you some uh, few tips on how to write something effectively how to write something effectively you know uh, i'm uh, conducting this series for professionals uh, to improve their english now as professionals all of you have done some english somewhere in the college or in the university or maybe in your tech courses or whatever so everybody knows english so that is not a problem with uh, whether you know or whether you don't know english okay that is not the problem the problem is whether you know how to effectively use this language for your everyday communication especially in the professional setup right especially in the professional setup now uh, you know as a professional you will have to write lot of letters memos uh, and other communications like emails right there are so many things that you will have to write so when you are going to write something so what should be your motive uh, what should be your intention uh, to show that you know english so much okay so you know uh, that uh, you know english so much so you have to show your colors to the others uh, is that your motive don't do that okay the language is for communication okay what do you mean by that language is for communication so whatever you write if others do not understand then the sole purpose of the language is collapsed okay so whatever you write that should be understandable to the others okay so you have to understand who is your audience huh? so you have to understand who is your audience if you are going to write to uh, say your boss right so that is one method of writing and if you are going to write into your subordinates who who have no such exposure to the english language then that is another thing okay anyway you should know who who are your audience okay so that is one uh, say like number one uh, rule of effective communication or effective writing so in uh, my personal opinion uh, i always uh, recommend you to keep the things simple because you know say up to uh, second world war yeah up to 1945 or 1950s so people started i mean before that people of course had very lengthy sentences okay lengthy sentences now, if you uh, just uh, look at uh, the 19th century uh, literature, uh, like say uh, Charles Dickens, uh, uh, or as uh, the Sherlock Holmes stories or things, uh, they are of course somewhat uh, simple. But of course, if you go to 19th century classics, like okay, so the sentences are very lengthy. Okay, they start from the top of the page and goes up to the uh, bottom of the page so this type of english writing is no longer used so you have to keep the things simple so write short sentences okay now just like uh, so you can start writing this is so this is uh, like that uh, provided that depending on that uh, uh, so that such as so you can add the things but that is not very proper okay so people are not interested because the today's world is complicated and people want to know grasp the things very quickly okay if you are starting from this edge and go to this edge and in the middle you have jumbled up everything so you are uh, uh, i mean uh, the, the message you are going to convey will not be conveyed okay so language is for communication so if you if they don't get what you are going to say then it's not going to work okay so you are going to become a job right and yeah there are some places you can show your color so if you if, if you are uh, registered in some english literature society or something so right accordingly huh? use some uh, very uh, old-fashioned word words hmm? or oh, just like use it you have to select the proper words right now you know uh, english is very rich with words okay you can say understand your comprehension huh? but 
where to use the word understand or where to use the word comprehension that's the trick okay that's the trick so this of course you can get by reading reading so much watching uh, TVs uh, I mean uh, films movies like right? so what's the difference between film and movie yes what's the difference between film and a movie same thing film is British movies American that is what I'm always telling don't mix up these two uh, English dialects British and American either you uh, follow the British one or the American one now in a country like Sri Lanka it's always uh, better to follow the British one okay because most of our people are uh, brought up studying British English not the American English American English of course uh, uh, was popular somewhere in 1990s or something when the computer technology took over right so then the other thing is now you know number one I told you you have to understand who is your audience and then number two keep the uh, short sentences right and there are some other things also okay so you have to uh, think about the time now sometimes uh, my students they come to me I'm not an English teacher right so but uh, in some universities or something when I'm doing visiting lectures some people come to me they have written reports and they don't know what's the time they start in the past and then go to present okay it, that is wrong so when you are going to describe something you should know when it happened whether it happened in the past or it's happening in the present don't mix up so because that it, it's like say uh, uh, like say uh, now if you are going to uh, describe something happened in the past you can't say they said we are fools why they said that is in the past we are fools that is in the present okay they said we were fools simple but if you want to say that in the present they say we are fools okay, we are not fools at all <laughs> neither you are right so uh, you have to think about the time and of course when uh, you are using perfect tenses I have seen um, in uh, our country most of the people use the perfect tenses unnecessarily okay so you go to uh, some place and say we have come okay we have come but why why can't you simply say we came so what's the difference between we have come and we came so what is the say, difference between the simple tenses and the perfect tenses perfect tenses is something something that has finished but it has some relevance up to now understand what i am telling now when i say uh, i have come say i have come to the school right that is perfectly okay but you have to tell something relevant to your arrival there to college you can't just say I have come it has no meaning at all okay so you can simply say I came so I, you came that happened in the past the thing closed okay there's nothing that you have to do after that but if you say I have come you have to say why your arrival is relevant to something that is happening now say you can say like this I have come to collect my child I have come to collect my child that's okay because uh, you you have come now you are going to collect your child now there's a relevance okay can you say I came to I came to collect my child that's also okay I came to collect my child that means but uh, I came to collect my child but the thing is now he has come uh, some say some 10 minutes or 15 minutes have passed okay understand the difference this is a very small difference but using the proper tenses show you how much confident you are in English language and uh, whether uh, you are, you know how to convey your message properly okay then about writing right even in writing of course you have to use the proper tenses okay don't always use this past participle thing that is very ugly 
I see always they are writing using past participle. I have come, I have done this, we have done this. Okay. Uh, now, if you say we have completed this contract, okay, so there should be some relevance now. Okay, or otherwise you can simply say we completed the contract. That's a past thing that is completed, that finished. Now, there's nothing you have to do thereafter. Okay, so these are some few tips that you uh, should know when you are going to uh, write the, uh, when you are going to write uh, some official communication. So, don't use uh, uh, lengthy sentences. Keep the things short and simple and always uh, think about the time that you are going to uh, use. Uh, that is mostly. And the proper words. Okay, proper words. What do you mean by proper words? Okay, now you know. Uh, that is again something about uh, whether you are having a proper word. Like say, English is having lot of words. Lot of words. So maybe uh, you are using uh, some uh, old word, so that is uh, not going to work. So people we see people will see some uh, odd there. Okay, that is not very proper. Okay, then uh, thank you very much uh, for listening to me. Have a nice time. So don't forget to subscribe my channel and uh, share with your friends also those who uh, want to improve little bit of English. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.